Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing, and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, before I get to Alexander Povetkin versus Mike Perez, let me just direct your attention to a very important article concerning the recent high-profile blockbuster fight between Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. Now let me just point out that boxing is a lot like politics. There's so much spin that you're not getting real information. In other words, a lot of these stories are really efforts to boost the fighter's reputation by someone associated with the fighter, a trainer, a manager, a promoter, etc. Right? It's very hard to get real news, a fresh take. Now, Freddie Roach gave an interview recently that's getting a lot of traction online where he claims that 99% of the people he talked with thought Manny Pacquiao got robbed in his fight against Floyd Mayweather. Right? Now, let me just say, it's because boxing is on pay-per-view. And because less than 5 million people saw the fight live as it happened in the arena or on pay-per-view, that folklore and stupidity like this is actually taken seriously. If all of us saw the fight, Freddie's comments would be a joke and a bad one at that. Well, let me just say this. Let's refer to somebody not on the Pacquiao payroll, his opinion on the fight. There's a very important article. You're going to have to dig for it. It's on BoxingScene.com. The name of the article is Cortez, colon, no rematch, Mayweather Pacquiao wasn't close. Now, the person making the comments, believe it or not, is Hall of Fame referee Joe Cortez. Understand that Joe Cortez was the referee for some of Pacquiao's biggest fights. Right? His fight, the first fight against Juan Manuel Marquez and Pacquiao's loss to Eric Morales. Right? So understand, Cortez has been in the ring with Manny Pacquiao. Understand, too, Cortez was the referee for Floyd Mayweather versus Victor Ortiz. The fact that Cortez is a Hall of Famer speaks for itself. Here's Cortez's comments on the fight. He says, I was not surprised by the outcome. Being that I was in the ring with Floyd Mayweather on four occasions as a referee and for three occasions for Pacquiao, I was able to, in my head, figure out that Pacquiao was going to have difficulties. And any chance I gave him was if he got lucky and hit Mayweather with a good solid punch and hurt him, which that rarely happens. Cortez continued, and this was taken from an interview with On the Ropes Boxing Radio, a show you should follow. Cortez continues and says, I think the fans got to forget about that, meaning the rematch. They got what they wanted to see. The two fighters fought each other. But if they were to have a rematch again, I don't think there's a reason for a rematch. It was not even close. They got to move on. Right? The point is simply, from Joe Cortez's perspective, he knew Pacquiao was going to have a hard time. And from Joe Cortez's perspective, the fight wasn't close. It went the way he thought it would. Right? All I can say is as you watch the fight, just look at how successful Mayweather is repeatedly throughout the fight. Right? Whether it's early, whether it's the middle of the fight, whether it's late, landing that straight right hand. Right? Anyone who tries to convince you that Mayweather didn't run away with the fight needs to try to also explain to you how a fighter hit with that many straight right hands 
could be viewed as being in competition on the scorecards. Right? Understand, folks, the decision in the match was unanimous. Now let's shift gears. There's a riveting moment in the James DeGale Andre Durrell fight where Chris Bird, former heavyweight champion, part of Durrell's corner, is conveying to Durrell that he needs to stay in the pocket so that he could catch DeGale on the way out. In other words, DeGale has his hands low already. He's coming in, he's backing out. Right? Bird saw that as the Gale backed out, he was vulnerable for a crisp counter. Right? He was naked backing out. The problem is you would have to stay in the pocket and deal with the Gale in the pocket to have the opportunity to hit him as he left the pocket. Now, I've said here online, few fighters in boxing have that skill. One of them that does is Alexander Povetkin. If you want to see how Andre Durrell should have handled himself in terms of being in the pocket, having a hand free, not being tied up, queuing it up so as the other guy takes a step back, he's there with the crisp counter, the power shot. Just look at the end of this Mike Perez fight. It's breathtaking. Right? Povetkin, who I've long said is one of the best athletes in the heavyweight division, is on the inside against Mike Perez, who's a southpaw. What's noteworthy is Povetkin doesn't tie up. What Povetkin does is higher level than that. Right? He's lingering around the pocket. He gets Perez on a shoulder. I'm not kidding. He gets Perez on a shoulder. And as Perez backs away and is naked, he throws a right hand with Perez on his shoulder. The fight's effectively over. Perez hits the canvas. When he gets up, he's lucky to have gotten up. Right? Ref allows the fight to continue and then realizes Perez is in no shape to continue. Calls it off. Right? It's a good stoppage. It's mastery in the pocket. It's a guy who is aware that as the other guy backs away, he has an opportunity. And Pervetkin doesn't disappoint. What's interesting, too, is when Pervetkin lowers the booming right hand, He's in position just in case he has to follow up. To follow up, he doesn't have to because Perez falls like a tree in the forest, right? Gets hit flush, is hurt, really can't continue, right? But had Perez stayed upright, Vivetkin was ready to empty the gun. Now, let me say this. I'm, I'm just going to tell you my thoughts I'll just tell you what I'm doing I'm not gonna issue a recommendation because it's gonna seem so off the page but just understand boxing's not like other sports right the quality of opposition these fighters fight varies greatly it's not like Major League Baseball where they're all playing Major League Baseball teams it's not like the NBA where they're playing other NBA teams. So you can look at the records and you can say, oh, the Warriors won 67 games. Oh, that's good. In boxing, some guys fight tomato cans, while other guys are fighting elite fighters. The guy fighting the elite fighters might have a worse record, but might be the vastly superior fighter. You know, he might be the guy fighting the equivalent of the New England Patriots you know, the Baltimore Ravens every week. Whereas the other guy is fighting the Jacksonville Jaguars. Right? These days, the New York Knicks. Right? I'll say this. 
We're in a moment in boxing right now where the two recognized heavyweight champions, Vladimir Klitschko, who does have a great resume, and Deontay Wilder, who does not, in my opinion, are at significant risk against their mandatory challengers. I think Tyson Fury beats Vladimir Klitschko. I think Alexander Povetkin utterly destroys Deontay Wilder. I know the public is going to look at Wilder's record. He's unbeaten. They're going to look at his KO percentage. He's only gone the distance once. Right? And they're going to convince themselves that he's competitive against a guy with far faster feet than Vermaine Stavern. Right? Power in both hands. Right? The ability to fight inside out. And a guy who has improved his game significantly since losing to Vladimir Klitschko. So I know there are many people who feel that, you know, these champions go on forever. That young guys who are unbeaten, like Deontay Wilder, uh, rule the world and are going to continue and that we're in the first inning of what's going to be an extra inning ball game. Okay, great. Right? I'm from the other side of the street. Styles make fights. Right? Tyson Fury might be quirky and, you know, might not be the best interview, might look a little bit unstable. In my opinion, he has the style to give Klitschko all kinds of trouble. You need to pay close attention to where that fight lands. If it lands in the UK, right? If you're going to have a lot of Tyson Fury supporters in the arena, if you're going to have judges in an arena, right, with a savvy crowd that's going to be yelling for Tyson Fury, if you're not going to have the kind of engineering type scene that you have in matches in Germany where everyone's polite and everyone watches and it's a German mindset, right? Then Tyson Fury is an even liver underdog that I'm making him out to be. As for Alexander Povetkin, I don't care where he fights Deontay Wilder. He could fight Deontay Wilder in Deontay Wilder's living room. Absent a lucky punch from Deontay Wilder who has power, right? The KO percentage speaks for itself. Right? He has knocked men unconscious. Absent a lucky punch that gets Wilder a KO, Wilder's going to get undressed. You know, I personally wouldn't be surprised if Wilder's people don't pay Prevetkin step aside money or don't try to challenge, you know, Vladimir Klitschko to solve both of their problems. Right? Because, in my opinion, after their next fights, I'm not sure if either. Vladimir Klitschko or, you know, Wilder is going to have a title, right? And so, you know, if I'm Wilder, I would say, you know what? The public knows Vladimir Klitschko. Why don't I fight him? If I lose, people will say too much too soon. But I won't be viewed as having been dismantled, having been unable to defend my title. Right? Because if instead he fights Alexander Povetkin, I don't think he can match Povetkin in any area apart from a great long right hand. Right? To me, Povetkin has the better left. Povetkin has the better feet. Povetkin can fight low. Wilder's not a guy who can clinch you like a Vladimir Klitschko. And my point to you is that was the worst night of Povetkin's professional career. I don't think that fight would go down that way if they did it again. Just like I don't think the Rumble in the Jungle, Ali Foreman, would go down the same way had they done it again and Foreman been aware of the rope-a-dope strategy. Right? So, let me just say, as you watch Perez against Povetkin, 
Just look at Pravetkin's cat quickness. Just look at how he's able to just throw punches back up. Right? Get out of the pocket, come in the pocket when he wants. Then, look at how when he's in the pocket and Perez is unprepared, he stays in the pocket. Perez is leaning on him. He doesn't clinch Perez. He knows that the way his head is, Southpaw Perez can't hit him. So he has a free shot as Perez backs away. He doesn't clinch Perez. He just comes, touches Perez with his shoulder. Just touches Perez with his shoulder, reaches back, ball game. Right? He's a future champion. I'll tell you, if that... Wilder, Prevetkin fight is ever announced, and Prevetkin is now his mandatory. I'm going to have to race to a casino to put down money. And I'm guessing a lot of fans who have bought into this Wilder hype, who just saw him beat Stavern, who saw him go the distance against a slow-footed Stavern, are going to feel that there are no questions about Wilder's stamina. Right? They're going to hear that Povetkin's lost before, and they're going to say, hey, well, Wilder fighting, you know, postal workers, uh, unbeaten record, right? Must be the better fighter than Povetkin, who's fought Perez, Tackum, uh, Klitschko, etc. Right? So, masterful performance by Alexander Povetkin. Um, Expect a changing of the guard within the next few months in the heavyweight division. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.